Hello and good morning, Allison. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I am really loving this book. And because it's more than just a reference book, it's more than just a picture book. It's actually like an invitation book that says, come visit me. Come see why this country is so beautiful. Oh, I love that. I call it your bucket list starter. You're going to want to hit every national park once you open this book, for sure. Well, I come from the state of Montana, so we were surrounded by national parks and the beauty of what nature is and things like that. And so, they, you know, so many people are so trapped inside their small towns and even big cities. They, they think that's their national park. <laughs> that's true. And you know what I love about this book is it covers the entire park service. So it's not just the 63 national parks that we have. It's state parks and recreation areas and landmarks. And so even if you are in a small town or city, you can open this book to your state and find something guaranteed that you can get to within a quick drive and explore right in your own at, at, in your own backyard. And I think that's such a wonderful way to encourage people to get out there and explore the great outdoors. Well, you break it up, too, in the way that there's an area for kids, grandparents, girls, a guy's weekend out. I mean, you really you, you guys did your homework on this. You know, we wanted to make sure there was every type of traveler covered in this book, and it's everyone from history buffs who want to see battlefields to adventure seekers who want to maybe go bungee jumping or zip lining on a canopy tour. So we really wanted to cover it all, and of course, kids and families as well, and different ways to see the parks, whether that's out there hiking, driving, kayaking. There's so much to do and see. Once again, being from the state of Montana, we had the, it's no longer called Custer Battlefield, but it's, it's it, you know, it's the Battle of the Little Bighorn. But th those battlefields are mm -hmm. a hot spot around the nation because people love their history. People love their history, and there are battlefields in almost every state yep. that you can visit one way or another. You can take a battlefield road trip across the country, truly, if you want to. So, so books of this, I mean, these serve as, as, as a planning stage in, in the way that, I mean, here we are, I mean, I realize that we're, we're really close to the month of November, but this, this to me is, is that first step of a, of a spring outing or a summer outing of next year, because if you don't plan ahead, you're not going to get that campground spot. That's very true, especially in the most popular parks. I mean, if you want to visit Grand Canyon and actually camp in the canyon, you're going to have to book your camping permit about a year in advance yep. to get there. So what I tell people to do is look through this book, figure out where you want to go over the course of the next year and start planning accordingly. And we try to give you all the information for how popular the park is, when you might have to reserve your entry or your campground permits. So that you can really plan in advance of where you want to go and when you want to go. Is there information out there that, that kind of just gives you guys an inside look at what the, what the next trend could be, let's say, for 2023? You know, we're always tracking what we're seeing people do out in the travel space, where we're seeing people get to. A lot of people want to go to the newest and greatest. Yeah. So New River Gorge was just declared a national park in 2020. So people are heading there. But I'm also seeing White Sands National Park in New Mexico. Again, a newer one, but not as new. It's picking up a lot of steam. I think people love that it feels like you're on another planet when you're there. It's white sand. It's dunes. It's backcountry camping. So I'm seeing a lot of traction out white sands and i think that's going to be a popular one for I next year i was going to ask you if they're still creating new national parks and you just answered that question so there, there is, this is not just something that they did back in the 1800s <laughs> no they're so they're still creating national parks and state parks and historic landmark landmarks are constantly being declared but you know new river gorge in 2020 white sand shortly before that so we're always looking at, you know, what are the state parks or national recreation areas that could potentially become a national park? New River Gorge was a state park for years and was named a national park recently, but there's other sites that are being named con constantly. In Atlanta, there's the Martin Luther King Jr. site now that was recently declared a national historic landmark. Wow. And so there's always sites being added, which is why this is the third edition to this book, because we're constantly updating our guide to keep up with the park service. Is Jimmy Carter the only president that has his own national park? No, Theodore Roosevelt Park, really? and it's actually a really beautiful area. It's 
wide sweeping plains. You can drive it in a day. There's great hiking routes. You can see a lot of wild bison in the park too. You know, a, a, a trail or a park that I wish that people could really dive into, and I, historians who might be listening uh, need need to get into this. It, that would be the Trail of Tears National Historic Trail, and and it's one of those things where you've you've got to understand the story and learn more about what actually happened in this nation. Yeah, and you know that is really beautiful about a lot of the National Historic Landmarks, especially the ones that are being discovered and named more recently. We're really diving into our American history and diverse history as well. And I think it really helps us understand how we became a nation today and how different people were impacted through that process. And it's a really beautiful way of opening people's eyes to history while also being out there and exploring this beautiful country that we have. I'm glad you said that because, I mean, over the past couple of years, we've we've had this this urge to cancel history. And it's like, no, you can't. And, and these national parks are actually preserving that history. They are. And I think, you know, you have to see where we came from to get, see where how we got to today. And you can't cancel history. It exists. So <laughs> let's go explore it and learn more by exploring it and understand more about our nation, our history, the people that live here. Um, in this park system, it gives us really the opportunity to see and do things that give us a greater understanding about our country. When we think of volcanoes, I, I don't think of New Mexico, but yet there is a national park in New Mexico, and, and, it, and it salutes the volcano. Yes, there's the New Mexico. There's also Hawaii National Park, which, you know, I was just talking the other day to someone about you can't control nature when you visit these national parks, and the volcanoes are a great example of that. In Hawaii, a few years ago, there was an eruption that actually closed the Hawaii National Park down for a, a long period of time. Wow. And so they actually had to reroute hiking trails to deal with the lava flows. It's back up and running, but those are the kind of things you can't control when you're visiting a park, and that's why you need to do your research before you get out there. Even Yellowstone this past spring had a lot of flooding, um, and so a lot of the park was closed down to visitors, and it's still recovering in its own way. And so part of me is about how to find out the latest status of the parks, too, so that when you're going, you can make the most of it. And Hopefully things like floods and volcano eruptions don't happen while you're at a park, but the park rangers are always keeping everyone up to date so that you can have the best experience possible. Now, I, I, I am one of those people that treats their national parks like a college football team because I lived in Billings, Montana. Yellowstone National Park was my rah, rah, rah. I never made it to mm -hmm. Glacier National Park. I mean, I'm missing out on a lot, aren't I? You have to get to Glacier. It is stunning and it's big and so you can't do it in one day for sure but it's definitely worth a see so do you have a favorite is is there a certain park that you know that you rah rah rah, rah for you know one of my favorites and it's actually a state national park rather than a big national mm -hmm. park is flaming gorge in utah and it borders wyoming and what i love about it the utah national parks have gotten so busy and crowded because they're beautiful it's it, there's a reason that they're so crowded but flaming gorge gives you all of that utah flavor it has the red rocks it has a beautiful river that sweeps through it and there's so much to do in that park there's a lot of hiking you can paddle the river you can go fly fishing there and so i love escaping to that park because it's quiet or because you feel like you have it to yourself without all of the crowds and so looking for those hidden gems, and, you know, that's what I love about this book is all those hidden gems are in there that they might not be the national park, but the state park right nearby is worthwhile. Absolutely. Allison, you got you got to come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. You be brilliant today, okay? You too.